Hey guys, so today's topic is going to be electronic boost control with Ecutech RaceROM. We're going to show you how to set up a basic open loop system and then move forward into adding proportional and integral controls and show you how to tune it and make it work really well and then uh, also maybe get briefly into some of the things that you might want to use it for. Uh, so I guess the first thing we'll do is just talk about boost control in general. I mean for anybody who's unfamiliar, uh, basically I mean everybody knows that with the supercharger you know, it's mechanically connected to the crankshaft, so more engine RPMs, more boost, and, it, and it's pretty much a fixed situation. Uh, whereas with the turbocharger, there is no mechanical link between the compressor wheel and the engine, so you have to have some way of regulating uh, compressor RPM and, and as a result boost. So the way that you do that is with a wastegate, uh, which is a little mechanical device, it's basically a valve uh, with a with a uh, diaphragm and a spring inside of it. And it has a uh, boost port on the bottom and as you add boost it opens up the, or as you show it boost it opens up the valve and shunts off some of the uh, exhaust gas uh, out of the exhaust manifold before it can make it to the turbine and that uh, can help regulate boost pressure that way. So uh, with electronic boost control what you're going to be doing is basically adding a bleed valve or an electronic bleed valve uh, into that circuit so that you can control how much pressure the wastegate sees and thus control boost. Uh, the way they work is they're actually a binary system, it's digital, so uh, they work on duty cycle. There's no concept of the valve being open a little bit or a lot. It's either all the way open or all the way closed and you just cycle back and forth between fully open and fully closed really quick. Of course the 86 doesn't have any idea of boost control from the factory. It's not a turbocharged car so the way we go about uh, making this happen is by repurposing the CPC uh, canister purge control solenoid output. So you're going to want to get something like a Grimspeed EBCS or a Tactrix or Pro Sport or really they're all just Mac valves, but you know, they they come branded as many different you know under many different brands. And you can get some uh, particularly I know the Grimspeed has one that will plug as you know has the correct plug for a plug and play installation. And you'll be looking for the one that's made for a Subaru, WRX or STI. Um, and the first thing you have to do when you go about setting it up in RaceRom is you need to tell it what the refresh rate of the valve is. For the CPC solenoid, it's actually really low. It's only about 10 hertz, which wouldn't be suitable for boost control. So you're going to want to go in here and look at the CPC duty multiplier and set it to something. Ecutech says between 30 and 50. Uh, I use 35, seems to work pretty well, um, but you might want to play with that and see, like if you notice that the boost is kind of oscillating and it's not controlling it very well, you might want to uh, get in here and fiddle with that number and see for your particular solenoid what works the best. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is ignore everything else <laughs> inside of this boost control uh, tab or menu, I guess you can say. Um, we're actually going to set up all the boost control using race ROM and custom maps. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into that. The first map that you're going to want to set up is your boost targets. I use a 20 by 16 uh, seems to have enough resolution. Um, you can see across the x-axis we have the accelerator pedal input. On the y-axis we have RPM. And then the values are boost pressure in manifold absolute pressure though. It's not manifold pressure delta so you have to remember to take into account uh, atmospheric pressure as well. Right? So, uh, If you look at the various definitions you can see that the, the activation definition is just that it's always active. Uh, there's no delay. The threshold is not set to anything. Uh, I enable it in all format modes. In my case it's in debug mode because I don't have the solenoid installed on my car yet. Uh, the integral is just the defaults because we're not using any sort of uh, integrals on these or on this map. The output definition is just that it's a calculation only. We're only going to be using it as inputs to other maps, so we don't have to worry about overriding any channels. Uh, the, X puts, the X input is the accelerator pedal, and the Y input is engine speed. Step to setting this all up is, as far as the wastegate duty, is to set up a good open loop control strategy. And the way you do that is uh, with a custom map. Again, we have the X input is going to be the result of custom map I, so it's going to be our boost target. Uh, the Y input is going to be RPM. And you're basically just putting in here duty cycle values. And these values are just pulled from the Ecutech docs. They're not uh, what's actually going to end up on my car. This is something you're going to want to tune bespoke to each vehicle. 
as you change turbos and wastegates and things like that, uh, boost control solenoids, they're all going to have different values for this. So you're going to want to make sure that you tune them each individually. And basically what you'll do is just try to dial this in so that you can get some nice consistent boost control without any of the closed loop controls, the proportionals and integrals. Uh, and basically all this is saying is that if my target boost is 1.69 and I'm at 5,000 RPM roughly, I'm going to have a duty cycle of 29.2. And what that means is that the valve is open 29.2% of the time, which is going to regulate how much pressure gets bled off, consequently regulate how much pressure the wastegate sees, and you'll be able to control boost that way. So the easy way to think of it is higher numbers, bleeds off more pressure, results in more boost. But this is definitely something that you're going to want to spend a lot of time out on the road uh, in different conditions, different gears, etc., and make sure that you can get some reasonably consistent boost control just using the open loop uh, control strategy before you get into trying to tune the proportionals and integrals, which are what will really nail it down for you. So going through all the different settings for this map, uh, you can see that the activation definition is just that it's always active. Uh, there's no delay, no threshold. Uh, again, it's enabled in all four map modes, debug mode in my case. Uh, there's no integral min or max. The output is going to be to replace CPC duty with the channel's map output, or with the map's output, uh, and that's you know to control the valve. Uh, the X input is custom map I result, and the Y input is going to be engine speed. By the time you're done with this, you should have a pretty good open loop boost control set up. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is add some closed loop controls, and we'll start with a proportional control, uh, which I'll explain here in a second. Basically, this is your map. Uh, on the x-axis, you have your actual boost, or manifold absolute pressure, and on the y-axis, you have your target boost. And it's just saying here that you know if my target boost is two point, or if my absolute, if my actual boost is two point four, my target's only zero point five then I'm going to remove 59% wastegate duty. If my, you know, target is, or my actual is 0.5 and my target is 1.7, you're going to add 36% wastegate duty, thus increasing boost. And you can see, like, anywhere that the numbers match up, you're going to be doing nothing. And it's pretty simple to understand. I mean, it's basically just a proportional compensation based on the amount of boost error that you have. And the map itself, again, is pretty easy to set up, pretty simple. Uh, the activation definition is just that it's always active, there's no delay, uh, there's no threshold, again it's enabled in all four modes, debug mode for me, uh, there's no integral, uh, the output definition is going to be to add the map output to the channel value of CPC duty, that way you know you can uh, use these values to modify whatever the current CPC duty is. The X input is going to be manifold pressure and bar, and the Y input is going to be custom map I result, which is your target boost pressure. So the way that you're going to dial this in out on the road, or fine tune it, is uh, to go ahead and back into your wastegate duty map that we just saw a minute ago, and you're going to want to mess it up just a bit uh, to introduce a little bit of boost error, and then turn on this proportional map, and you're going to want to log the interim and result values of this map, uh, also manifold absolute pressure, target pressure, uh, things like that, and you're going to want to watch and see how quickly the proportional is able to bring the boost back into line. Uh, if you notice that it's too slow, you're going to want to go in and increase all these values and decrease all these ones proportionally. Uh, if it's too aggressive and you notice that it's kind of oscillating around the target and kind of looks like a sine wave that keeps getting smaller until it dials in on the target, uh, then you're going to want to decrease these ones and increase these ones proportionally to kind of flatten out the the uh, correction a little bit. And you can just play with that for a little while until you notice that you have a nice smooth correction. Uh, and then from there you'll move on to dealing with the integral uh, compensations. Now for the integral compensations you can see the map looks very similar to the proportional and the values are a lot smaller. Uh, and I guess we should take a second now and probably explain what integral compensation is and what it does. Uh, basically what you're saying is that you're going to take this value, so there's, it introduces the idea of a stored value, so, and that's called your integral. So every time the ECU comes around and runs this routine, it's going to say, hey, you know, what is my, uh, boot, what's my current boost, what's my target boost, and it's going to say, okay, well it's minus point, you know, my 
correction is going to be minus 0 0.5060. And it's going to go ahead and add that to the channel value. The next time around, if it's the exact same, it's going to see, okay, well, my integral is already minus 0 0.5060. And now it's telling me I need to remove another 0 0.5060. So it's going to subtract, you know, point or one point two or 1.02 or whatever that would be. Uh, so basically it just goes by every time. It's like an iterative process. So it stores the value and then every time around it, it adds or subtracts this value to the uh, integral value and then adds that to the maps output. So it's kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know really what you could relate it to, but when you see it in practice, you'll see, and when you log it, you'll see that it's pretty apparent what it's doing. Uh, and again, I mean, on here, the same thing. I mean, your x-axis is going to be your absolute pressure. Uh, your y-axis is going to be the target. And you know, anywhere that you have the same value, it's going to be zero. If you're overshooting, you're going to want to take away. Or, yeah, if you're overshooting your boost pressure, you're going to want to take out some duty cycle. And if you're undershooting, you're going to want to add some duty cycle. Uh, and we'll go ahead and look at you know the definitions on this one. It's a little bit different than some of the other ones. Uh, the activation is that it's only active when the channel value is above a threshold. <clears throat> and the reason why you do that is because you don't want this messing with the calculations until you're you know, above a certain level to keep it from uh, getting in the way of the other two systems. The activation delay is nothing. The threshold, in my case, I'd have it set for 1.5 bar and to turn off at 1.4. Uh, for the enable, again, it's all format modes, debug in my case. Uh, you want to set a max and a min for the integral so that it doesn't end up you know, going too far or letting that integral value grow too large. Uh, Ecutech suggests minus 10 and 10, so that's what I use. Uh, for the output definition, it's going to be to add the map output to the integral and then add the integral to the channel value, uh, and that's CPC duty. So you can see kind of there by the definition how it works. Uh, the X input definition is manifold pressure, and the Y input, of course, is custom map I result. Now, when you go to tune this out on the road, you're going to basically do the same thing that you did with the proportional, and you're just going to log all the relevant parameters, and you know see how quickly the corrections are working for you, or if they're too aggressive, and make the appropriate changes. Uh, the one thing that's important to note is that you're going to want to maintain process separation between the proportionals and the integrals. So you want to remember to turn the proportional control off before you go and try to tune the integral control. So once that's all done, you'll just come back into your wastegate duty map, uh, restore the correct values to eliminate the boost error that you had introduced earlier for the purpose of tuning the closed loop systems, and uh, then you'll go ahead into your custom map I or your boost targets and start to raise them up to something that'll let you see the control working. Um, and of course, you know, this you probably would have changed these as well in the process of uh, editing your boost controller, or editing the wastegate duty map to introduce boost, boost error, you would have had to have left these off the wastegate spring by then anyway. So uh, you'll just go in here and start to creep up onto your boost values that you want and uh, just kind of watch it and see how it works and you know make any adjustments as necessary it's it's kind of finicky i mean it's one of the harder things to tune in uh as far as it, this tuning stuff goes but it's certainly not too difficult i mean something that just takes a lot of time and some patience but once you get it dialed in it's really nice uh, it allows you to limit boost at lower rpm of course engines don't like high load at low rpm that's bad it's a really good way to scatter parts on the floor so uh, if you have a big turbo that's particularly important. Um, some of the things that we're going to cover in future episodes as well is you'll be able to do uh, boost by gear, or boost dependent traction control, or uh, you know just all sorts of different, I mean pretty much the sky's the limit. You can think of just about anything that you might be able to do to control boost. So uh, it's a really nice thing to have. Um, if you don't plan on using any of this stuff, like the boost by gear and things like that, you might be better off just sticking with a manual Hallman Pro or some sort of you know ball and spring type uh, manual boost controller. I mean, it really does eliminate one variable, particularly when you're setting up the car and first tuning it. I mean, I always keep a Hallman <laughs> by on hand just in case because you can kind of get rid of this whole variable and uh, you know set up the whole rest of the car and then do this last uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to PM me or you know that's about it.